Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Do I have your attention? <laughs> I don't mean to be clickbaity, but this is my sex face because what we did today is we did a full face look using products with vulgar or sexy names. So um, I'm sure you're already thinking of a couple different products from NARS in particular because NARS is kind of known for that. So here's what a, a full face of naughty products looks like. Um, please stay tuned to the end. There is a funny little surprise. As you can see, I am absolutely covered in confetti. Um, we had a problem, guys. So if you would like to see me completely screw up the end of this video, which is, I think, kind of comical, then and, of course, see the process of getting this full face of sex makeup themed products, then please keep watching. All right, before we get started, let's uh, address the elephant in the room. Is my terrible breakout. Pretty sure it's about to be that time. You know what I'm saying. So um, yeah, this is absolutely massive and I actually feel like it looks even smaller on camera than it is in real life, which is really sad. But anyway, let's dive into using the products that have slightly vulgar or names that are, um, you know, a bit sexual or sexual innuendos, if you will. So very first thing we're going to do, we're going to prime the face. And what I'm going to be using is the NYX First Base Primer. I changed where my viewfinder is, so I'm going to be doing this the whole time when I mean to do this, and I'm sorry. But um, NYX First Base Primer Spray, we're just going to spritz that all over. Ah, good to go. So next, what we are going to do with a wet or damp, I should say, sponge, we are going to use the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. Um, I particularly use the shade 3.5 and obviously <laughs> I chose the Naked Skin Foundation because um, it has to do with being naked. Um, you would not believe how hard it was to try and find a foundation outside of Urban Decay's All Nighter line and Naked Skin line that had any sort of hint towards a name that is slightly sexual. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I tried, I mean, there's other foundations, like I have this one here. It's the L'Oreal True Match Foundation and I have it in the shade N3 Natural Buff. I mean, that's like, that's what you get with foundations. It, it, it's, you know, neutrally colors and that's typically how they're named and this is still named, you know, shade 3.5, but the lovely main name is Naked Skin. And hopefully I haven't lost you in that ridiculously long explanation as to why it was hard to find foundation that had a sexy name. So if you're still here, kudos to you because I just went on a rant, but I'm going to go ahead and apply that all over the face here. And then I will blend, ooh, get a little drippy on the nose there. I'm going to go ahead and blend it out with a damp beauty sponge. And I just want to show you because this was also in my haul. Look at the size difference between the damp one and the dry one. I just think that is so crazy. And then I'm going to be using the concealer sponge today too. And I just thought that the size difference between these were just crazy as well. Like the damp one, the dry one. It's just nuts to me how much bigger they get you know, with just a little bit of water in there. So let's go ahead and start pressing that into the skin. I want to know what y'all think about y'all. Um, I want to know what you guys think about makeup names that are sexual or naughty, if you will. I mean, it's definitely not a new thing to have makeup names that can be somewhat 18 and older <laughs> but um I don't know like I wouldn't say I am a prude by any means but you know 
I just wouldn't think to be like, oh, I'm going to buy this shadow by Nars because it is named something super, super naughty. Like, and I understand that sex sells. And I don't know what it is about that that makes it sell for makeup. I mean, you obviously want to look sexy, but some of these names are just like downright dirty. I'm going to use another Naked Skin product because obviously concealer is a lot like the foundation situation in that it's kind of hard to find, um, you know, aptly named concealers in the naughty sexual realm. Um, so I hope you stick with me beyond like the concealer and like eyebrow situation because that's when it starts to get a little bit more fun. Um, I'm not even offended if you skip ahead in the video past these parts because it's pretty generic. I mean, you've never not heard of naked skin before, that's for sure. But the other product when we get there that was super hard to try and find anything with like even remotely a sexual name was definitely the um, brow pencil because again like the foundation you're picking out colors that are like blonde or light brown or medium brown or dark brown so just the thought or idea to even um, name something after sex is kind of like well, why I don't I don't know but I think I got as close as I can so now I am going to blend out that concealer with this teeny tiny Ulta Beauty uh, concealer sponge, which I have not used the tiny one yet from the haul that I did. Um, this is my first time. I was worried that it would feel too small. I'm just kind of used to using bulkier sponges and making do with getting into small areas, but it's not bad. I feel like it's taking a smidge longer to get it blended out because I have to do about twice as many dabs to cover the same surface area. But that's okay. Let's see if we can get that little zit friend covered up. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go back over with the big sponge to just continue to make sure that everything is blended okay. Okay. All right. We are done with foundation and concealer. Next, we have yet another Urban Decay product. I swear we will use other products here in a minute, but this is kind of like where Urban Decay makes its big, I don't know, moment, I guess, in this video. But I'm going to set everything, including under eye, with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Powder. Um, I actually, as much as I've seen the Urban Decay Naked Skin concealers and foundations and everything else, I have for some reason never looked at their setting powder and so just decided to pick it up. Um, it comes in this one shade. All it says is that it is waterproof setting powder. So um, even though it has a bit of color to it, you know, it, it still is going to give some translucency. and. Considering, you know, I have used this a couple times. This isn't the first time that I've used it um, as a whole. I don't notice any color variation whatsoever between wearing it and not wearing it. So even though it looks, you know, pretty beigey in the pan on the face, it's not, you're, you're not gaining any additional color per se. Oh, <laughs> oh God. It's always good if you can crack yourself up, right? Sure. Just say sure. Yes, Jamie, it it is good to crack yourself up, even if you're not really that funny to anybody else. Okay, so next, moving on to brows. This was the other area, as I mentioned, that was really super hard to try and find a product that had a sexy name to it, and this is as close as I could get. And I don't think I did that bad. I mean, when you think about it, this is also a brand new product. It's by Maybelline, and it's called Total Temptation brow definer and ah, I'm nervous because if you know anything about my special little situation um, brows are difficult for me I have like a two-step process I go in with you know kind of like a brow definer type pencil and then I go back in with a gel liner to make sure that it looks like I have individual brow hairs well I definitely could not find a gel liner that had a dirty or slightly sexual name. 
whatsoever. So I am completely omitting that part of my eyebrows and just filling in with this. Um, as you can see, it's got kind of a similar tip to the Anastasia brow definer pencil. Um, wish me luck. We'll see how, oopsies. We'll see how it goes. On the other side, it has a cute stubby little spoolie, which will be probably my saving grace in making it look like I have individual brow hairs because I'll just kind of spoolie them in there. Um, We'll see how it goes. Because it takes me forever to do my brows, I am going to cut away to do the brows, and then when I come back, I will have two brows. Okay, and now I have brows. And because this is, I mean, I've, I've, I've used the product on the back of my hand, but this is really the first time that I've used it on my brow. And because it is a new product to the beauty market, I do want to tell you kind of my offhand first impression of it. It is super dry like super, super dry. I had so many, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but do you see those little like flecks and chunks on the end there? I know you can see that. That's minor in comparison to when I was in like elbow deep doing my brows. I just had these little chunks flecking off all over the place, making a hella huge mess all over my desk, which is just great because you know, Everyone loves accidentally getting that kind of stuff on their clothes or accidentally smearing it across wherever those little pieces have landed. So I'm not super impressed with that product. Okay, so I didn't zoom you in too much, but a little bit more to where you can kind of see what will be happening on my eyelids. And so up next, we are moving on to eyeshadow. And boy, did I get lucky in that, I mean, okay, eyeshadows in general, there are hundreds of colors out there that have you know, sexy or kind of vulgar names, but I hit the jackpot with this one. It is the Tarte Sex Kitten Palette. Because it's a palette and it's named after sex, technically that means I can use everything in said palette, which qualifies, right? Even if the shadow name isn't necessarily naughty. So yeah, I am using Sex Kitten by Tarte. And if you'll notice, which I'm super excited about, that's a highlighter, which just made my job a lot easier. So I'm going to go in first with the color Paw up here in the upper right hand corner. And I'm going to take my Morphe M330 blending brush, tap into that color, tap off the excess and create a good transition in my upper crease area. So I'm just going to blend that in. Okay, next I am going to go in with the center color Feline, which is just a very gorgeous taupey brown. It is really neutral. I wouldn't say it's too cool. I wouldn't say it's on the warm side. I say it is a very true, like neutrally yet taupey color. And so it plays really well into this cooler transition shade, but I have also used it with some warmer trans transition shades and I found that to be quite nice as well. So it's a very versatile color, I feel. And it's interesting because when I pair this color with a cooler toned transition color, I feel like it pulls out the cooler tones in that feline color. But when I put it with a warmer toned one, all of a sudden it looks warm. So it's like kind of like the chameleon of eyeshadow colors. It makes it super easy to work with. And I hardly get any fallout with this palette whatsoever. I'm going to take my Morphe M332 pencil brush. I'm going to dip into Wildcat, which is this dark brown down in the corner. I'm going to tap off the excess and I'm going to stamp it into that outer V area of my lid and slowly work it just slightly onto the lid and into that crease area. I really hope that you can't hear the construction people outside. I have a, I live in a new house. We closed August 1st, which is super exciting to, I mean, not only have a new house, but to have the opportunity to pick out like all of your finishings 
and be a part of the building process of your home. It, it, it's yours at that point. No one else has lived in it. And the only downside of that is that the houses next to us are not done. So we hear a lot of beep, 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 and like crashing of metal parts and grinding and sawing and hammering and I mean, I don't notice it as much anymore because I'm kind of used to it, but I'm realizing that there's a possibility that it's being picked up on the camera, which might be ultra annoying for you. Okay. Now, as usual, going back with that original Morphe fluffy brush, the M330, continuing to work around that color. Make sure it is nice and blended. All right, next what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this lighter shade called Sly in the middle and top there and I'm going to take a flat brush here. I'm going to dip into that and I'm going to highlight the brow bone. <clears throat> and what I typically like to do when I highlight brow bones is I go in with like a creamier, not in texture, but creamier in color shade. It's a little bit more yellowy tan. And I do kind of an overall highlight, which you'll see here, all over that brow bone, get right under, you know, all the way in even to where that brow starts get it nice and highlighted. And then I take a color like this, like Roar, which is more of a white, like it is a very, very subtle cream tone to it, but I would call it probably white. And I put that right on the highlight of the brow bone, just to give that particular spot a little more of a pop. And I feel like it even kind of makes my eyes always look like I'm, hmm, hmm, which I don't mind. And by watching a couple of my videos, you'll probably learn very quickly that I have incredibly animated eyebrows. So now I'm going to go in with the highlighter shade, if this would ever focus, right here, which is called Secret. Then with the same brush, I'm going to take a little bit on there and I'm going to highlight the inner corners of my eye. And boom, we have eyeshadow done. In addition to the Sex Kitten eyeshadow palette, there is also a Sex Kitten liquid liner, which I just think is super cute because we've got a cute little kitten on the cap there. And, um, you probably saw this with my Ulta haul as well, but I'm going to go ahead and wing my liner here. All right, our winged liner is done, and now moving on to mascara. <clears throat> this one I feel like is the most scandalous mascara that has come out on the market for a couple of reasons. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people probably would have expected me to use the better than sex mascara, but what I am using is the NARS Climax, which <sighs> the packaging alone, I feel like looks like a sex toy. Like obviously, obviously they are referring to sex with this product. <laughs> I mean, it's not just like, oh, Climax, like a uh, you know, the climax of a story or of a movie or of a song. Like, I mean, it could be the climax of anything, the climax of your day. What is the highlight of your day? No, no, no. This looks like sex toy. Okay. So we're getting some of that NARS climax up on the lashes. Okay. So mascara is on. Now we are going to go in with the tart lashes that were included in the sex kitten uh, package, if, if you will. I mean, it came with the liner, the palette and the lashes. I think that was everything in the package, but they're, they're very subtle. If you can see them very subtle, nothing too crazy, not like super voluminous, just, you know, your basic, nice little enhancement to your natural, national, 
natural lashes, um, which I find interesting because, you know, in talking about, you know, sex as a marketing, I don't know, I don't want to call it a scheme, but as like a marketing tool, I suppose, I guess I just envisioned this sex kitten set to be a little bit different. Like, I don't know what, what I mean, what is even a sex kitten? What does that even mean? I don't understand. Are kittens sexy? Kittens aren't sexy. That's, well, first of all, that's bestiality. <laughs> but I mean, I just, I guess I've never really understood it. But for some reason in my head, and this is also to think to marketing, is when I think of like sex kitten or, you know, anything of the sort as far as makeup goes, I picture like, you know, the Victoria's Secret um, bombshell makeup and super fluffy eyelashes and a real sharp contour and a nice nude glossy lip. I don't know. That's just what I picture. And these are just like boop, 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 little, little lashes, which I've used before, as you can see. I'm just going to go in with a little bit more of the NARS Climax and help blend my natural lashes with the false lashes. Okay. Lashes on. Next step. Oh no. I forgot a step. I was going to use, and I just realized this, because I wasn't going to use like a powder contour because guess what? It was really hard to find a powder contour with a naughty name. I was going to use the Hula Quickie Stick. Get it? Quickie? Have a quickie? You get it. Okay, so... I totally didn't give myself a contour and because it's cream and I already put powder on, we all know that that's a no-no in makeup. So I just failed my own challenge. Awesome. I wonder what would happen if I put it on over top. Should we experiment? Should we see? Yeah, screw it. That's good. I'm not going anywhere. Well, I am, but oh my God, it feels so wrong. Okay. So hula quickie. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I am going to go somewhere, but oh my God, I can take all this off. I'm not ashamed to go out in public without makeup on. So we'll see, uh, we'll just see how it goes. So do I even dare do the nose? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Calm down. Just get it on there. No turning back now. Put on your brave face. Let's do this thing. Okay. Here, you know what? It helps if you like unroll it a little bit. I can't believe I forgot to do this step. Like what? I love contouring. How does that even happen? I don't even know. Okay, so I'm going to use my wet sponge here. Oh God, this is gonna be so bad. Okay, let's see what happens. Boom. Okay, well, do I look muddy? Because that's the fear. I might be able to make this work if I blend it out quite a lot. You know, I expected worse. We'll see. I'm actually kind of shocked that it's not a worse situation than it is. Okay, legit, seriously. I've had worse things happen to my face during makeup, whether it's like accidentally swiping your face with mascara, which I'll tell you what, ruins your day because it takes off all that makeup when you wipe that off. I'm not that upset. I mean, the nose looks pretty uh, interesting, but I might be able to fix that with a bit more concealer and then set it just ever... So slightly. All things considered, I can't believe that that just worked. I'm actually legitimately shocked. I am going to set the areas that I contoured just to make sure everything kind of stays where it's supposed to. But I really thought that was going to be a bigger disaster than it was. I thought I was going to have to refill because I, you can't exclude a quickie. I mean, that's like, I don't know. Never mind. I won't even go down that path. Okay. So 
Next, I'm at a real, I don't know, I'm at a real moment where I can't decide what I want to do for blush. If you can guess, it's going to be NARS. But I'm between two colors. I'm between this center color of the Heartbreaker palette here, which is obviously Orgasm, and then probably the naughtiest named product I have ever heard in my entire life is Deep Throat. <laughs> Because it's the naughtiest, um, yeah, I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to put a little uh, deep throat on my cheeks here. Even if it's not necessarily the color that I would choose for this look. I mean, obviously this entire video is about using products with sex or vulgar names. And I don't think you can get much more vulgar than deep throat. So that's what we're doing. Okay, that is on there. Next, we are going to highlight, and if you remember in the Sex Kitten palette, we have Secret right here. So I'm going to put that on the tops of my cheekbones and all of my usual highlight areas. Look at how well the nose turned out. I'm so surprised. All right, now for my lip color, I'm going to be using the NYX Slip Tease. Get it? Like strip tease. In the color, let's, if you'll focus, let's get physical. Physical. I won't sing for you. Also, my voice keeps squeaking, so you really don't want me to sing for you right now. Now that we have lipstick on and everything is done, we are going to go in with the Urban Decay all nighter setting spray. And use that generously. Practically bathe in it. Whew. Okay guys, this is the final look of having a full face of products that are named after sex. So, um, I hope you enjoyed watching and I suppose this is where we have our big finish. Oh, that didn't work at all. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, I have to show you what I was going to do. This was so going to be like the big finish. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. I have to show you. Hold on. Okay. So when I was at Ulta, they had these, uh, maybe you've seen them. Oh my God. These IT limited edition superhero party poppers for the holidays and this one has a mascara in it and the other one has a brush and I thought we were going to have a, like a big climactic finish where I would pop it up and there'd be confetti and a mascara and this is what I got instead. <laughs> I got a giant mess of confetti and no fun video effect for the big climactic finish. Oh my God, this is so bad. Okay, so, <clears throat> didn't work as planned. So, uh, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I put out videos inconsistently, so you can look forward to that. Oh wait, here's the top of it majority of the confetti. Oh, and here's the mascara. <sighs> I found it. <sighs> oh, God. Okay. I guess you could say that didn't work out. But anyway, subscribe to my channel. Like this video. As I was saying, I put out videos inconsistently, but uh, I'm sure you'll see more major mess ups from me in the future. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you later. Bye. Oh my God. It's everywhere. Do not recommend abort post-mission. Oh my god. You guys, this does not pop, okay? It just goes...